Hey guys, today I'm going to show you a little bit about Feed the Beast. And I am not on Windows right now, I'm on Ubuntu 12.10, 12.10, Quantal uh, Quetzal, if that's how you pronounce it, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to install Feed the Beast and on Ubuntu and put a link in the bar in the Unity uh, sidebar here. So you can have a nice little shiny icon for it. Same with TechIt and Minecraft. It's the same process for them, so it'll it'll des describe the same thing. So go to feed hyphen the hyphen beast.com. Really nice website. Go to download jar. And you're also gonna want to download server because I'm gonna show you how to do that in a little bit. But make sure you do the jar and the server. Uh, once you have those downloaded, go into your you know, downloads folder or wherever. Uh, Let's just say this was it, it's another file, but uh, go right click cut and go back home, up a folder, and then um, control H will get you uh, hidden files and go ahead and create a dot FTB launcher folder here. And it will do this for you, but it's best to go ahead and do it right now. And in this folder, it will be empty obviously because you just will have created it, uh, right click paste and you'll see this show up right here uh, and what you're gonna want to do is launch it for the first time by just uh, make sure you have Java installed Java 7 Java 6 I have both um, I find 7 works better with feed the beast uh, 6 works better with uh, tech it and Minecraft so I have those run with running on 6 uh, with different amounts of RAM um, but go into your right click properties and permissions and go ahead and click allow executing files program make sure that box is checked and make sure your open with is set to default open jdk java 6 or 7 runtime and uh, you click the set as default to make that happen every time go ahead and click close and you can go ahead and double click it run it for the first time it will generate all of these items besides this and this and this you're going to want to get from the site or you can make your own, whatever. Uh, I just came here and went, you know, view image, and went ahead and downloaded this, and it's their ftb.png. I'm not sure if they approve of that, but uh, you know, I need something for my sidebar to represent. So, represent. Uh, here's ftb.sh, and that will launch um, this jar. You may think that's stupid having something launch something else, but. Uh, it's the easiest way to get it to work off of here. And that's the first thing I'm gonna show you how to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this and display. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is open gedit or whatever editor you prefer. Uh, it has to save as any type of file in the UTF-8. Um, so I just did this. I might put this in the description uh, just so you know generally how it's gonna work. But this leads to my user library, JVM, Java 7, Oracle, JRE library, AMD64, because I have a 64-bit system. You may have i386 or whatever that one is for the uh, x86 32-bit version. Um, but with this one, I tell it to launch that jar file. So this is telling this to go ahead and launch automatically. And you'll see why in a little bit, but uh, I have, you know, minimum of three maximum of six gigs the jar tag and the tilde slash means your home folder right here and uh, the dot ftb launcher is the folder you made and slash ftb launcher dot jar you can go ahead and f2 on that copy that in whatever you named it or if you change the name go ahead and put that right here and save the file and go ahead and do the same thing you did for the other one go in permissions allow executing files program and this is on the dot sh file default application doesn't matter uh, as long as, uh, because right as of now, if I run it in terminal, it's going to launch uh, Feed the Beast. If I just display, it's just going to open the, uh, the gedit. Uh, it's going to open the code in gedit. So, keep in mind that this is here, and this is here, and this is here. And go into your back, back home, where you just created that folder, and go into your dot .local directory, and that should be there if you have a normal install, go into share applications and you can see I have my feed the beast there uh, along with, let's see, TechIt and Minecraft should be there, yeah, there's my TechIt and my Whoa. Minecraft, okay 
And I'm gonna have to open this through G Edit. Let's see. Local share apps. Feed the beast. Dot desktop files don't like to open as this, they like to just launch. So here's the desktop entry, and you can name it whatever you want. Uh, but it has to be dot desktop in this dot local share applications directory. Uh, you can give it a name here, you know, FTB, whatever you want for that. Same with uh, the US, uh, English, or you could have uh, many other if you know their uh, tag, if you know the language tags, and obviously if you know the language. <laughs> and you put execute, and you don't do the tilde thing in here. I don't know why, but you just don't. You just do slash home slash your username, you know, whatever you have right here. And uh, slash then your dot FTB launcher because this under everything under here is your now your home directory. And so you do slash your FTB launcher slash FTB dot SH and that's what you're going to want to execute that SH file we created. And then this is just for visual sake. Uh, the icon was in the same folder, so FTB icon.png. Terminal false because you don't want the terminal to launch when you launch the. Uh, game because it already has its own console and stuff you don't need extra windows splashing up and type equals application startup notify equals true just so you can tell different processes and different log files that it's working and that it is currently running it will allow it to uh, run better in RAM too because of that uh, X out of that and now it's not going to be once you create this file it's not going to be in here yet but what you're going to want to do again is right click properties permissions allow executing file as a program and then go ahead and drag it in which I've already dragged mine in it'll say drop to add application and then you'll get this go ahead and click it and once you launch um, the most popular one obviously is this first one so you just leave that there and you create a profile create your profile click um, a little uh, prompt will pop up just check to remember your thing and right here you're gonna want the same install folder as the same folder that you had defined in here which is slash home slash your name username slash FTB to launcher and um, even if you're running it for like the first or second time I'd, I'd definitely suggest clicking the force update whenever you do configure all this uh, just so you get the latest um, and it's gonna take a while to download everything anyway so go ahead and get that and click launch And you'll get a couple different pop-ups. Hello prompts. And this will go ahead and pop up. It'll say a whole bunch of different errors, but this is a beta, so be understanding of their process. And there'll be a lot of severe looking things, but just disregard them. And there it is. Um, yeah, right now I'm gonna down downsize it and show you how to do a server. And with your server file, uh, once it's in your the jar is in your downloads directory. Go ahead and cut it, paste it wherever you want. Right here, I pasted it into my storage game servers FTB because I have a lot of servers. So, uh, paste it in here. There will be nothing else in here yet. And go ahead and run it for the first time, just like I showed you before doing the permissions. Uh, well, this one doesn't, but well, I guess it doesn't matter then. Just right click and run with uh, open with Java for the first time, and it'll generate all these directories and stuff. So, uh, that'll be good and then again go into your text editor which I'll just op open this to display so you can see the code and in here I have uh, you know hash or pound symbol and then exclamation mark forward slash bin forward slash sh that's my first line and that's commented just so you uh, as like a backup like of where to look for the file which I should have a backup there, but, you know. Okay, and uh, Java XMX, which is the maximum amount of RAM I want the server to use, 3 gigs. The minimum I want it to use is 2, because I want it running uh, pretty smooth. There's a lot of a lot of mods running on this, so... Uh, in, yeah, you're going to want the Java tag, and you're going to want this jar file. So, go ahead and, you know, F2 on that, whatever your jar is. Copy that, paste it right into here. And uh, 
you're gonna want no GUI unless you want um, you know the interface to pop up but this will still pop up the uh, terminal which you want you want to be able to run commands and op yourself and things like that for your local server and go ahead and X out of that do the right click properties permissions tab allow execute files program make sure it opens with or no I guess this one doesn't matter so never mind <laughs> um, but this one you can make a, a link if you want but I, I don't have the uh, real estate to do that so I just double click run in terminal and a whole bunch of stuff will come up here it'll be running for especially the, on the, your first run it'll run for maybe a minute and a half two minutes there's a lot a lot of uh, prep that it needs to a lot of folders and files it needs to create but normally yeah when you see the portal gun it's done so I'm gonna go ahead and get back into here multiplayer and I think you should know this by now but the server address should be localhost oh right and um, <laughs> in your this is very important in your server.properties before you launch you should have done this before you launch it crap <laughs> but server IP equals should be localhost make sure you have that set and um, don't see any other important settings I set this as world it was set as FTB underscore beta underscore a for some reason I don't know what that is if I need that or not I guess I'll find out but uh, yeah I set max players down to 14 since we're gonna be uploading this as a live server in January uh, that's why I'm configuring it now running it locally and actually playing on it which uh, <laughs> all the players on my server probably won't be happy to see this but I have started there's our spawn I'm getting a bit of lag right now I'm loading everything up there we are it may be because I gave my uh, gave my screencaster uh, priority it's definitely running slow but uh, I'll figure that out some other time and I likely won't be recording so uh, yeah this will be set up it'll probably be hopefully ftb.wobooth.com will be the IP address for the uh, our server but you will have to be approved since it's going to be uh, you know there's not going to be any plugins to you know do anti-grief so it's you're gonna have to be really approved it's whitelist so I should save and that's it that's uh, how you run feed the beast at least locally um, when I run it on my server I'll just uh, I'll be uploading it through SSH terminal and managing it through S SSH FTP uh, access to an Ubuntu server which we have uh, remotely and that that process is pretty easy you just upload it and um, set it to run exactly the same way you set it to run here in Ubuntu because that is Ubuntu if you have an Ubuntu server so uh, can't help you out if, if you're on a Windows server or anything else I'd, I don't know much about that so uh, alright have a good day